Don't you know you got to hang in there? And it's rough, I know, cause I've been there. Life throws us in. You'll soon be safe and sound. And you can rest. But till then, keep your smile. You too. Yes, you do. Can't you wait ten more days? Can't you? Well, nobody, nobody waits anymore. Nobody does. I'm waiting.
If the answer is love, then the answer is you. Still the question persists, so I spend all my time making lists of the wonders you do. Wonderful. Tell me. Tell me it's wonderful, Lenny. Say it. Say it again. I didn't hear you. I just said it. How many times you want me to say it? If you wouldn't keep asking me so much, you would have heard me say it. It's goddamn wonderful, all right?
How'd you get away from your cute little wife? It's no problem. I, I can handle that. I know I wouldn't let you get away with it. Oh, I don't. Can I wrap up when I'm here? Here's the deal. The marriage is off. What do you think about what I've said so far? I'm just listening. I can't think if I'm listening. <laughs> Tonight at your hotel, 7 o'clock, your father and me over cocktails. I lay my cards on the table. He finds out I mean business. Yeah? Yeah. Well, anyway, it's been a terrific three days. Three days? Where do you get a load of the next 40 or 50 years? said something about uh, you're laying your cards on the table. Were those your cards? Uh, no, no, I ju I'm just kind of shuffling that. Uh, this is actually my deal now. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, and just just plain old fashioned corny lingo, sir. Uh, I have fallen head over heels with your Kelly here. Uh, it just, you know, it didn't take me long to make up my mind. One. Good luck did it, actually, if you want to know the truth. But uh, I'm the kind of crazy hairpin that just doesn't need much more than that. And then that's it for life with me. Now, there is a slight complication. Um, I happen to be a newlywed. Um, I, uh, I made the big mistake about five days ago in New York. Uh, and when I say big, sir, I mean Radio City Music Hall big. Um, you may have seen her around the pool. She's a, a nice girl, um, but just uh, not, not, not really my type. Uh, I married her because I, I thought it was the decent thing to do. And I've learned that uh, decency doesn't, doesn't always pay off. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, get out. Uh, uh, it'll be difficult, but not impossible. Not not when you're as determined as I am. And sitting opposite you, Mr. Corcoran, is probably the most determined young man that you have ever seen. <laughs> now, I, I know that you, you are going back to um, Minneapolis tomorrow, and it's my plan, just as soon as I uh, work out this messy business here, to... Uh, to follow you out to Minnesota, to uh, get myself set up there, and to uh, lay claim to your, your lovely daughter here. Um, those are my cards. And uh, Mr. Corcoran, there's, there's, there's not a joker in the bunch. Now, having uh, spoken my piece, I, 
I, I would like I would like to know, uh, in all candor, how you feel about what I've said, and uh, to ask if I have your approval. Not if they tied me to a horse and pulled me forty miles by my tongue. <laughs>
I don't want him in this house. I don't want him in this town. This is my house. I pay taxes in this town. I don't want him in my town. I don't want him in my house. Well, why not, Dwayne? Because I hate him. That's why not. But despite that, Kelly says he's an admirable young man. Well, can't you at least see him? For me, Daddy? Please do it for me. I understand you're quite taken with this part of the country, Mr. Cantrell. Leonard, yes, ma'am. I like what I see out here, and I like what I breathe out here. And I've just about made up my mind that I'm going to make this my home. Oh, well, from what I've seen, I'd say you're a very determined young man. <laughs> I take that as a compliment, Mrs. Corcoran. I don't mind saying it. This is one of the finest meals that I've ever had. Oh, thank you, Leonard. It's simple, you know. Mr. Mr. Corcoran doesn't really care for fancy food. Though I imagine you've tried just about every kind of exotic dish in New York. Exactly. You? See, that's, that's the trouble. It's exotic, but it's not honest. I mean, it's fancy, but it's not, it's not real. I mean, this is honest food. There, there's no lying in, in that beef. There, there's no uh, insincerity in those potatoes. There's no deceit in the cauliflower. This is a, a totally honest meal. You don't know what a pleasure it is to sit down this day and age and, and eat food that you can believe in. Oh, oh what an original way of putting it. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder if you ladies would allow Mr. Cantrell and I a few moments alone. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course, certainly. Mr. Cantrell? Yes. Leonard. Sir. I was very quiet at dinner tonight. Because I was listening. I'm in the banking business, you know. I'm called upon to have many business dinners. I find I can tell more about a man by listening to his dinner table conversation than by reading all the books and the records and the balance sheets in the world. I heard everything you said. Your feeling about the big cities, the clear air out here, the honest food, getting back to the soil. And I will tell you, quite honestly, I was very impressed. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear that, I was very impressed. And I think I can also say, quite honestly, I have never heard such a crock of horseshit in my life. Sir? There's no deceit in the cauliflower. Where do you get ideas like that? They just... They just come into the New York head of yours? I was merely trying to impress the fact that it was a, a I, I pleasure. I see to... through you. You don't think I see through you? You could wear two wool sweaters and a raccoon coat. I'd still see through you. I've never once tried to misrepresent myself or Leonard, deceive Leonard, anybody. I... Leonard, you think you're quite determined, don't you? I think once you get your mind set on something, that's it. Leonard. You don't know what determination is. I eat determination for breakfast. You want to see a brick wall? You're looking at a brick wall. Just 
stride any day and you'll be on your way you're going far when it's rough you've got to hang in there and it's rough i know cause i've been there life throws us in and it's either sink or swim keep your head look around do your best you'll soon be safe and sound And you can rest But till then Keep your smile Glued on tight You'll be alright You're going far 